than half of humanity lives in towns and cities, and this number is growing all the time. In 2012, one out of every three people living in cities in the developing world lives in a slum. UN Habitat projects that this number will rise to 1.4 billion slum dwellers by 2020, if nothing is done. The drainage is very poor. The roads are really a problem. Then our people, actually the way they, they, they sleep, you find some people five, ten in one room. Apart from dealing with the more obvious disadvantages of life in these informal settlements relating to their health and physical security, these families are unable to make long-term plans for their future. One of the main difficulties is the insecurity of land tenure. People in the squatter settlement, first thing, that they, if you see their houses, it's all temporary because they don't know when will the, the eviction come. In 2008, UN Habitat launched the Participatory Slum Upgrading Program, or PSUP. The program targets to improve the living conditions in towns and cities and positively contribute to Millennium Development Goal 7, Target 7D, to improve the lives of at least 100 million slum dwellers by the year 2020. Currently, there are 38 countries among the African, Caribbean and Pacific states participating in the program, which is funded by the European Commission. La croissance démographique des villes a connu ces dernières années une accélération, une augmentation jamais connue par le passé. Pour l'Union européenne, l'engagement de l'ensemble de ses États membres comme de la Commission européenne est très clair. Il s'agit, dans le cas des Millennium Goals, de faire en sorte que au moins 100 millions des personnes qui aujourd'hui connaissent cet habitat précaire puissent connaître un environnement différent dans les années à venir. This participatory approach is really uh, something that is very good because it brings everybody on board, you know, right from the, the grassroots, the intended beneficiaries, then the local people will embrace, you know, uh, the different activities and ensure that they, they are implemented successfully and then also uh, they will ensure that they are maintained and it will become a, something sustainable. The PSUP has adopted a three-phase approach. Phase one, urban profiling. Phase two, action planning and program document formulation. And phase three, project program implementation. Here, on Fiji's largest and most populated island of Viti Levu, this community has just embarked on the profiling phase of the program. Together with um, the director of housing, um, land and uh, urban development, we want to be able to hear from you what you think about your community, your issues, and how you think your community should be developed. And in the capital of Ghana, in West Africa, this area of Ashaiman is occupied by informal dwellings. One small section has already been replaced by a new complex which houses 32 families in self-contained apartments. The new owner-occupiers are purchasing the properties through long-term mortgages. The complex also includes 15 commercial units. I have four children and we were, we were living in a single room and sharing the bath and the toilet with the other people. In this place we have everything inside the room. We have a kitchen, toilet and bath, two bedrooms and a hall. I feel very, very secure here. Still in West Africa, Niger has made significant progress in the PSUP. To date, two slum areas have been involved in urban profiling. Due to poor sanitation, the vulnerable urban populations in these congested neighborhoods face problems of malaria and diarrhea. This has resulted in a high rate of child mortality. 
dans la capitale, si je prends l'exemple de deux bidonvilles, ceux de Sagar et de Gamkale, qui font l'objet d'études au niveau de notre ministère en collaboration avec ONU Habitat, vous avez à peu près 600 habitants par hectare. Et 600 habitants qui vivent sur un hectare sans service de base. Donc vous imaginez un petit peu les problèmes que ça peut causer. The mapping and profiling of these vulnerable communities serves not just as an urban regeneration tool, but also as a measure to prevent and respond to disasters. We want to ensure that we are prepared and we work with communities, vulnerable population, to be prepared for likelihoods of certain emergencies. So we get a profile, the risk and hazard profile of some of this population. That's another key message. We want to arm communities with the information they need to not settle in certain areas or with the information that is necessary to work with government to ensure we're preparing communities not to live in an hazard way. The catastrophic earthquake that hit the Caribbean country of Haiti in 2010 led to an emergency intervention by UN Habitat. The rapid response to the earthquake has been more recently succeeded by long-term initiatives. UN Habitat's participatory slum upgrading program is working in Haiti to help address the slum situation. Although it is still early days, a number of reconstruction and upgrading activities have been started under the UN Habitat. These include the construction of a community resource center, street naming and house numbering, improvement of an access road, and the installation of solar-powered street lights. But despite these positive steps towards reducing the world's informal settlements and setting vulnerable urban communities on the road to development, there have been some challenges. A lot of them are very suspicious of plans. Uh, I, either uh, the thing that the plan, when executed, will deny them of their shelter or it's going to be managed by people other than themselves and they will have to pay very heavily for this new facility. We have had some challenges in one of some of our local councils. You find that the leaders themselves, either because they have not been able to get political mileage out of the proposed interventions, some of them have had a tendency of uh, uh, misguiding the public. UN Habitat, through its participatory slum upgrading program, faces these challenges head on as it makes steady progress towards tackling urban development issues at regional, national and local level. I would like to thank the UN Habitat for giving us the opportunity to carry out that survey and uh, it has uh, helped me to learn new things, especially in approaching these quarter sermons and especially the data we collected, it helped us a lot in determining uh, priority project areas. As these pilot projects begin to roll out, the best examples will be replicated and scaled up to bring rapidly growing cities in African, Caribbean and Pacific countries closer to the ultimate goal of halving the number of slum dwellers by 2020. of humanity lives in towns and cities and this number is growing all the time. In 2012, one out of every three people living in cities in the developing world lives in a slum. UN Habitat projects that this number will rise to 1.4 billion slum dwellers by 2020 if nothing is done. The drainage is very poor. The roads really a problem. Then our people, 
actually the way they, they, they sleep. You find some people five, ten in one room. Apart from dealing with the more obvious disadvantages of life in these informal settlements relating to their health and physical security, these families are unable to make long-term plans for their future. One of the main difficulties is the insecurity of land tenure. People in the squatter settlement, first thing, that they, if you see their houses, it's all temporary because they don't know when will the, the eviction come. In 2008, UN Habitat launched the Participatory Slum Upgrading Program, or PSUP. The program targets to improve the living conditions in towns and cities and positively contribute to Millennium Development Goal 7, Target 7D, to improve the lives of at least 100 million slum dwellers by the year 2020. Currently, there are 38 countries among the African, Caribbean and Pacific states participating in the program, which is funded by the European Commission. La croissance démographique des villes a connu ces dernières années une accélération, une augmentation jamais connue par le passé. Pour l'Union européenne, l'engagement de l'ensemble de ses États membres comme de la Commission européenne est très clair. Il s'agit, dans le cas des Millennium Goals, de faire en sorte que au moins 100 millions des personnes qui aujourd'hui connaissent cet habitat précaire puissent connaître un environnement différent dans les années à venir. This participatory approach is really uh, something that is very good because it brings everybody on board, you know, right from the, the grassroots, the intended beneficiaries, then the local people will embrace, you know, uh, the different activities and ensure that they, they are implemented successfully and then also uh, they will ensure that they are maintained and it will become a, something sustainable. The PSUP has adopted a three-phase approach. Phase one, urban profiling. Phase two, action planning and program document formulation. And phase three, project program implementation. Here, on Fiji's largest and most populated island of Viti Levu, this community has just embarked on the profiling phase of the program. Together with um, the director housing, um, land and uh, urban development, we want to be able to hear from you what you think about your community, your issues, and how you think your community should be developed. And in the capital of Ghana, in West Africa, this area of Ashaiman is occupied by informal dwellings. One small section has already been replaced by a new complex which houses 32 families in self-contained apartments. The new owner-occupiers are purchasing the properties through long-term mortgages. The complex also includes 15 commercial units. I have four children and we were, we were living in a single room and sharing the bath and the toilet with the other people. In this place we have everything inside the room. We have a kitchen, toilet and bath, two bedrooms and a hall. I feel very, very secure here. Still in West Africa, Niger has made significant progress in the PSUP. To date, two slum areas have been involved in urban profiling. Due to poor sanitation, the vulnerable urban populations in these congested neighborhoods face problems of malaria and diarrhea. This has resulted in a high rate of child mortality. In the capital, Si je prends l'exemple de deux bidonvilles, ceux de Sagar et de Gamkale, qui font l'objet d'études au niveau de notre ministère en collaboration avec ONU Habitat, vous avez à peu près 600 habitants par hectare. Et 600 habitants qui vivent sur un hectare sans service de base. Donc vous imaginez un petit peu les problèmes que ça peut causer. The mapping and profiling of these vulnerable communities serves not just as an urban regeneration tool, 
but also as a measure to prevent and respond to disasters. We want to ensure that we are prepared and we work with communities, vulnerable population, to be prepared for likelihoods of certain emergencies. So we get a profile, the risk and hazard profile of some of this population. That's another key message. We want to arm communities with the information they need to not settle in certain areas or with the information that is necessary to work with governments to ensure we're preparing communities not to live in an hazard way. The catastrophic earthquake that hit the Caribbean country of Haiti in 2010 led to an emergency intervention by UN Habitat. The rapid response to the earthquake has been more recently succeeded by long-term initiatives. UN Habitat's participatory slum upgrading program is working in Haiti to help address the slum situation. Although it is still early days, a number of reconstruction and upgrading activities have been started under the UN Habitat. These include the construction of a community resource center, street naming and house numbering, improvement of an access road, and the installation of solar-powered street lights. But despite these positive steps towards reducing the world's informal settlements and setting vulnerable urban communities on the road to development, there have been some challenges. A lot of them are very suspicious of plans. Uh, either uh, the thing that the plan, when executed, will deny them of their shelter or it's going to be managed by people other than themselves and they will have to pay very heavily for this new facility. We have had some challenges in one of some of our local councils. You find that the leaders themselves, either because they have not been able to get political mileage out of the proposed interventions, some of them have had a tendency of uh, uh, misguiding the public. UN Habitat, through its participatory slum upgrading program, faces these challenges head on as it makes steady progress towards tackling urban development issues at regional, national and local level. I would like to thank the UN Habitat for giving us the opportunity to carry out that survey and uh, it has helped me to learn new things, especially in approaching these quarter sermons and especially the data we collected, it helped us a lot in determining uh, priority project areas. As these pilot projects begin to roll out, the best examples will be replicated and scaled up to bring rapidly growing cities in African, Caribbean and Pacific countries closer to the ultimate goal of halving the number of slum dwellers by 2020. of humanity lives in towns and cities and this number is growing all the time. In 2012, one out of every three people living in cities in the developing world lives in a slum. UN Habitat projects that this number will rise to 1.4 billion slum dwellers by 2020 if nothing is done. People who stay here are poor, they can't afford to buy their own houses and so we are all questioning this small area, this small community. Yeah, most of the houses are crowded, like mine, I got uh, 10 family members in my house of only two bedrooms. Eh? Fiji is an island nation in the South Pacific Ocean. Urban growth in the country has accelerated over the past few years and towns have been developing beyond the control and authority of the government and urban planners. There are about uh, over 239 squatter settlements throughout Fiji. 
and the population uh, it constitutes about 15 percent of the national population so that's a huge amount uh, that is uh, concentrated along the Subonosori corridor so basically there is a need in 2008, UN Habitat launched the Participatory Slum Upgrading Program, or PSUP. The program targets to improve the living conditions in towns and cities and positively contribute to Millennium Development Goal 7, Target 7D, to improve the lives of at least 100 million slum dwellers by the year 2020. Currently, there are 38 countries among the African, Caribbean and Pacific states participating in the program, which is funded by the European Commission. The aim of the program is to address slums in a, in a more strategic way, uh, addressing systemic issues so as to achieve scale and also to achieve impact on the ground and changing people's lives. It is dependent on the inclusion of as many actors as possible so as to tackle the slum problems from different angles. Uh, very importantly, it is action-oriented, practical, and it's rights-based. The PSUP has adopted a three-phase approach. Phase 1, urban profiling. Phase 2, action planning and program document formulation. And Phase 3, project program implementation. They've just finalized the, the topographical survey. Here, on Fiji's largest and most populated island of Viti Levu, this community has just embarked on the profiling phase of the program. We want to be able to hear from you what you think about your community, your issues, and how you think your community should be developed. We will collect all this information and put it together in a plan. I come from the island and I come to find education. So I live in the squatter now because I can't afford to pay. I got a house there, but uh, I don't know whether it's in the line or will be uprooted. This man's contribution echoes that of thousands of other slum dwellers in Fiji and in informal settlements all over the world who are unable to make any long-term plans for their future. One of the main difficulties is the insecurity of land tenure. People in the uh, squatter settlement, first thing that they, if you see their houses, it's all temporary because they don't know when will the, the eviction comes. Nandi is the third largest town in Fiji. Like other urban centers in the island country, the peri-urban areas surrounding the town are growing rapidly with unplanned squatter settlements. In Nandi, the urban profiling phase of the PSUP has been completed and action planning has begun. Are you connected to the sewage system? The sewage problem, because they don't have a proper sewage over here, people, they can't uh, do much because it's not a leased land. There is no drainage around here. Because of the drainage, I think the flood okay, takes place over here. We want help from NGOs or other people who can help us in making our house on higher post so that we can be safe during flood. Council uh, also is looking forward into extending its boundaries in the future to include these settlements. But uh, before that, Council will ensure that uh, the settlements are upgraded to Council uh, acceptable standards. This will be the biggest challenge. UN Habitat's participatory slum upgrading program, working in partnership with all the stakeholders and the target groups, is well on its way to the implementation stage of this initiative. Rapidly growing cities in African, Caribbean and Pacific countries are now that one step closer to the ultimate goal of halving the number of slum dwellers by 2020. The long-term plans are to look at uh, upscaling and replication at scale so that we are able to address and to tackle the slum issues and, and, and problems in a more uh, systemic way and in a, in a more organized way so as to achieve our targets and to make a big difference in the living conditions of the people in slums.
More than half of humanity lives in towns and cities, and this number is growing all the time. In 2012, one out of every three people living in cities in the developing world lives in a slum. UN Habitat projects that this number will rise to 1.4 billion slum dwellers by 2020, if nothing is done. The major problem we have here is poverty. We don't even have capital to start a business. And also we lack toilets. What we have is flying toilets. And also when you look at the quality of water that we are buying and using, it's not good. Uganda, a landlocked country in East Africa, has a population of about 35 million people. Although Uganda's level of urbanization is low at around 13% of the total population, the annual urbanization rate of 5.2% is high. There is no corresponding development of basic infrastructure, housing or social amenities. This has led to overcrowding, traffic congestion, substandard housing, poor sanitation and the growth of informal settlements. We are experiencing a very, very fast rate of uh, urbanization as a country. Some of the demands uh, of uh, the people who move to urban areas include things like decent shelter, decent housing, uh, things like uh, modern basic infrastructure in the form of roads, in the form of uh, sewage and sanitation arrangements, in form of power supply, and in form of social infrastructure. And it is in this context... In 2008, UN Habitat launched the Participatory Slum Upgrading Program, or PSUP. The program targets to improve the living conditions in towns and cities and positively contribute to Millennium Development Goal 7, Target 7D, to improve the lives of at least 100 million slum dwellers by the year 2020. Currently, there are 38 countries among the African, Caribbean and Pacific states participating in the program, which is funded by the European Commission. The aim of the program is to address slums in a, in a more strategic way, uh, addressing systemic issues so as to achieve scale and also to achieve impact on the ground and changing people's lives. It is dependent on the inclusion of as many actors as possible so as to tackle the slum problems from different angles. Very importantly, it is action-oriented, practical, and it's rights-based. The PSUP has adopted a three-phase approach. Phase 1 – Urban Profiling Phase 2 – Action Planning and Program Document Formulation and Phase 3 – Project Program Implementation. Mbale Municipality in Eastern Uganda has completed the first phase of the program. This approach of placing communities at the centre of the programme and encouraging them to make decisions about their own lives has been well received. It also helps to build the capacity of the communities, uh, especially uh, when, when you come to make the, the uh, interventions which are intended to resolve the problems, the communities tend to get more involved if they have been participating right from the beginning. Uh, the program ceases to be uh, a, a government program or a government project and it, it moves more to our own. I participated actually. It was a welcome idea, especially in our area here. People were very happy. They were actually helpful. For instance, if you went to a home, they were very ready to, to receive us. And actually they have been waiting for the outcome of that exercise we made here. Slum upgrading programs, when executed in a sustainable manner and taken through to conclusion, play an important role in breaking the cycle of poverty. But many of the target groups start out by being skeptical of both government and non-governmental organizations that initiate such programs. Act Together Uganda 
is an NGO that used existing structures in microfinance saving schemes to initiate the profiling stage of the participatory slum upgrading program. For us, it's an entry point because when you trust somebody with your money, then you have have confidence to, to, to talk about other issues. But because they organize around savings, they do other things, like they collect data about themselves. They know what concerns them, and they identify priorities to come up with, you know, projects. Florence Namaja, who lives in Namatala Ward in Mbale, has been fully involved in the profiling stage of the program and looks forward to the opportunities that it will create. As a result of this exercise, community members know the population of this area in terms of males and females. We now know how many toilets we have, the number of water points and bathrooms, and because of that we have learned the importance of that exercise and now we can sit down and plan for the future. UN Habitat's participatory slum upgrading program, working in partnership with all the stakeholders and the target groups, is well on its way to the implementation stage of this initiative. Rapidly growing cities in African, Caribbean and Pacific countries are now that one step closer to the ultimate goal of halving the number of slum dwellers by 2020. More than half of humanity lives in towns and cities, and this number is growing all the time. In 2012, one out of every three people living in cities in the developing world lives in a slum. UN Habitat projects that this number will rise to 1.4 billion slum dwellers by 2020, if nothing is done. For Ghana, each city has a slum settlement or a slum pocket. We are at about 5.8 million slum population. So if 24% of our population lives in slums, it speaks to us that we need to do something quickly about slums in the country. In 2008, UN Habitat launched the Participatory Slum Upgrading Program, or PSUP. The program targets to improve the living conditions in towns and cities and positively contribute to Millennium Development Goal 7, Target 7D, to improve the lives of at least 100 million slum dwellers by the year 2020. Currently, there are 38 countries among the African, Caribbean and Pacific states participating in the program, which is funded by the European Commission. La croissance démographique des villes a connu ces dernières années une accélération, une augmentation jamais connue par le passé. Pour l'Union européenne, l'engagement de l'ensemble de ses États membres comme de la Commission européenne est très clair. Il s'agit, dans le cas des Millennium Goals, de faire en sorte que au moins 100 millions des personnes qui aujourd'hui connaissent cet habitat précaire puissent connaître an environment different in the years coming. The PSUP has adopted a three-phase approach. Phase 1, urban profiling. Phase 2, action planning and program document formulation. And Phase 3, project program implementation. The West African country of Ghana is one of just a handful of countries in sub-Saharan Africa that reduced its population of slum dwellers by more than 20% during the 2000 to 2010 decade. 
Ghana's national housing policy, which prioritizes slum upgrading and prevention, works in perfect harmony with UN Habitat's participatory slum upgrading program. What we have done is we have gone through the first phase to ensure that we have the stakeholders' involvement and also, more importantly, to decide what aspect of community upgrading with respect to housing do we, do we, do we really need at this stage. In the capital city, Accra, this area of Ashaiman is occupied by informal dwellings. One small section has already been replaced by a new complex which houses 32 families in self-contained apartments. The new owner-occupiers are purchasing the properties through long-term mortgages. The complex also includes 15 commercial units. I have four children and we were, we were living in a single room and sharing the bath and the toilet with the other people. In this place, we have everything inside the room. We have a kitchen, toilet and bath, two bedrooms and a hall. I feel very, very secure here. There were nine families occupying the land. We were able to transport or move those families into a transit camp whilst we, were, whilst we cleared the land for construction. To date, we also were able to find a local bank to provide the occupants with mortgages. The local bank provides them with a mortgage for a term of 10 years, but the mortgage is guaranteed by the TAMSAF, by the fund, for a period of seven years. The pilot project has been a clear success, but it hasn't been without challenges. The programme had to overcome suspicion and an element of resistance to change by the community. Once the first phase has been completed and people see the benefits, there is now a, a yearning by other people to be brought on board and that is also encouraging other people to register with these associations and make contributions towards the acquisition of the property after the upgrade has been uh, done. Josephine Okain is a resident of another informal settlement in Accra called Gamashi. She lives in this small house with her four children and other relatives. Although the PSUP is in its initial stages here, Josephine says she's looking forward to the slum upgrading project. I need support of the government to change this house. It is difficult enough to send my children to school without having to pay for a better house. I would be ready to participate by joining the community or joining a saving scheme. UN Habitat's participatory slum upgrading program recognizes the importance of identifying tailor-made solutions to urban poverty, working in partnership with all the stakeholders and in particular with the target groups. As these pilot projects begin to roll out, the best examples will be replicated and scaled up to bring rapidly growing cities in African, Caribbean and Pacific countries closer to the ultimate goal of halving the number of slum dwellers by 2020. We can't just wait to see some of these uh, proposals getting on the ground, building some new structures, organizing businesses for the community, laying new roads or paving, you know, maintaining the roads, bringing sanitation and water into the community, you know, and then improving the way of life for the people.